creating unity out of mayhem. That's the challenge not just for Republicans, but also for Democrats after a divisive and tumultuous primary season. Donald Trump might now have a clear path to the Republican nomination, but the support of the GOP establishment is squishy at best. Both Presidents Bush, 41 and 43, have said they won't endorse Trump. Governor Charlie Baker said he won't vote for him. And just this afternoon, House Speaker Paul Ryan said he is, quote, not ready to endorse him. But Trump supporters are pleading with all Republicans to get in line. I think that trying to divide the Republican Party and our standard platform is, 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 is ridiculous. I mean, you've got a choice here. Uh, are you going to support Hillary? Are you going to divide the Republicans and lose, and lose the presidency? The Clinton campaign has released a new ad trying to capitalize on the lack of GOP party unity. It highlights the stinging criticisms Trump has faced from fellow Republicans during the primary. He is a con artist. A phony. Donald Trump is the know-nothing candidate. Donald is a bully. But it's not Shangri-La on the Democratic side either. Hillary Clinton lost in Indiana Tuesday and is having trouble bringing progressives into her camp. Last night, Bernie Sanders declared he's not going anywhere, and he's continuing to hit Clinton hard on a range of issues. Secretary Clinton has chosen to raise her funds in a different way. She voted for the war in Iraq. She wants to raise the minimum wage, and that's good. She wants to raise it to 12 bucks an hour. Not good enough. So what do the Democrats need to do to get on the same page? Joining me are former Public Safety Secretary and Clinton supporter Andrea Cabral. Nice to see you, Andrea. Uh, Cambridge City Councilor Nadim Mazen. I forgot who you were for a second. It's good to see you, <laughs> nice Nadim, see you. a Bernie Sanders supporter, and of course, columnist Joan Vinaki from The Globe, who wonders where in the world is Elizabeth Warren. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes. Nadim, let me start with you. Your guy's not going to be the nominee. He himself says it's an uphill battle. What's the point of staying in? Why is he still doing this race? I think there's two things going on here. One is Bernie has consistently moved the party back to, back to the left, uh, to its own values, to a stance on health care, to uh, entertaining a $15 minimum wage. and yeah. that, All those things are super important. And Clinton really needs to follow that line and grab those voters. And she has the choice. She needs to really do that. Um, but why can't he do that? advocating that agenda as a positive agenda rather than continuing. He wins Indiana and he's hitting their own Goldman Sachs. He's hitting their own Wall Street. Why? Do, what's the value there, there to his is agenda the, to continue to criticize this woman who's beaten them, essentially? The second factor, and an outside chance admittedly, is uh, superdelegates move over from one side to the other based on all kinds of factors. Indictment, Clinton not doing well, a war of attrition emerging between Trump and Clinton. Clinton could very well be unelectable, and if Democrats see that, it's going to be important to see that before the convention. Does staying in hurt your... I know the line is, I've, I've seen Hillary Clinton on CNN last night, of course he should stay in, he's brought a lot of important things, but does his continued involvement hurt your candidate? Well, given who Hillary Clinton is and the fact that she's been the target of completely baseless attacks for 30 years, I would say nothing hurts Hillary Clinton. That said, I think, and, and it's sort of evident in what you just heard, this idea of the buzzwords, indictment, that's not going to happen. And most people, reasonable you don't know, people... You don't know that. It's unlikely, but you don't know Well, that. if you can point me to the statute oh, that they're talking about and what the alleged violation would be and how any evidence points to that, then maybe we could have a conversation. Well, the FBI is interviewing, CNN is reporting, is interviewing but they're her not, people. But she's not the target. And they've made it very clear that she's not the target. And so what you have are misdirects. I mean, I find it interesting that, you know, Bernie Sanders can campaign however he wants to campaign. But the notion that the people... The over 10 million who have voted for Hillary Clinton, that they are not progressives, is insane. There are lots of Democratic progressives. She's gotten more votes than anybody in this race on either side. But, Andrew, I want to get back to the whole issue of, uh, of his continued campaigning. It, I would argue that the constant, the, the incessant Goldman Sachs references, even if he doesn't intend it, plays into the thing Trump has done brilliantly to the Republicans. Branding, they all have a name, Lion Cruz, Little Marco. She's crooked Clinton. Now, it doesn't matter whether you agree with it or not, but doesn't he provide the factual foundation for people to say, yeah, she is crooked? Well, there's Clinton. no question that what Bernie Sanders, the way Bernie Sanders is going about his campaign, he ought not to be doing. He is not a Democrat. He still isn't a Democrat. He was allowed to run in the Democratic Party, and he would like the party to adhere to him. I think the negative things that he is saying about her, though, they don't, they're not going to hurt her in terms of the nomination. Bernie's not going to get the nomination. They don't hurt her running against Donald Trump because Donald Trump is a, goal, is a Goldman Sachs guy himself. So they kind of fall flat in the general election. Are you convinced that 
his uh, colleagues end up going to her candidate? Um, I don't know. Can I answer what to what Andrea just said? You may said? answer anything right. you want. Sure. Right, thanks. I think that Sanders does hurt Hillary Clinton. How? Um, well, first of all, Trump could make an ad on what Sanders is saying, just like Hillary made an ad based on what Trump's mm -hmm. rival said, and it, and it could hurt her. And uh, to what Nadim said, um, moving her to the left, he can move her so far to the left that she misses the door to the White House. I think that there is a danger in just keep on pushing, pushing, pushing. The, um, the opposite she needs, is true. She need, how so? I mean, the, she the, needs independence. She can't People be, in the center. That's where you win elections. You need I mean, people you do, in that the may center. be true, Trump but her current supporters... Let's finish the sentence and then you I mean, Trump is already moving to the center. And he has an appeal to people because of this. He'll say anything. He'll do anything. He sounds independent. The fact that he's connected to Goldman Sachs isn't held against him the same way it's held against True. Clinton. I think Sanders is hurting her right now. Yeah, there's no question that she has embraced his agenda. If you turn, if you didn't hear her voice and just read what she's saying on some election nights, you'd think your guy was saying it. That may a be lot true. of people agree with her. And, and if she moved a little further and, act, and, and frankly, and actually embraced young voters on a 15, 15 rather than a 1250, uh, and frankly, if she turned her back a little bit on Wall Street, that would be impressive. And we need that to happen because her current followers will follow her, and she needs to grab all the people who came in with Bernie and did not consider themselves Absolutely. fans of the Democratic Party. Those Bernie people no. are going with Trump? Pardon me? The Bernie people right. going if with they Trump? don't vote. We're talking about if people they who don't vote, they don't lives. vote. The it's vast majority the of them time. didn't vote before now. It's the vast majority of them they didn't. They were now. not reliable voters. Mm -hmm. The people who are Hillary voting Clinton for Hillary doesn't need the people who've been drawn out, no. these ideologically the driven young people. No, the Democratic nominee always wants to enlarge the party. But in terms of an independent who has repeatedly denigrated the Democratic Party and said, I, sh I would never run as a Democrat because I, crit I have too much negative to say about them, who has taken money from Hillary Clinton to win his Senate seat? But he's running as a Democrat, Andrea. He's running as a Democrat for, the, as he said, for the money and for the media, what? not to unify the party. And for someone to sit who is a Bernie Sanders supporter and say she needs to do what we want her to do, when she is in fact a Democrat running as a member of the Democratic Party. Does it worry you when you is, when you go to Real Clear Politics in the morning? I only go about 20 times a day, and you see that your candidate beats Donald Trump by an average of seven, eight points, and his candidate beats uh, Donald Trump by 13 or 14 points. Jim, Does that worry you? Jim, no. Let me standards. let her go. This is a quick I'm one. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't worry me at all. And in fact, what I understand from the polls is that there is maybe a one point difference between how much Bernie, San Bernie Sanders beats Trump versus. Clinton it's actually Trump. larger than that. But what, what was your point about that? I was that? going to say that the media, um, Bernie Sanders has gotten no scrutiny compared to the scrutiny right. that Hillary Clinton has gotten. So you think the numbers should come he, down? Should he somehow Absolutely. win the nomination? Believe me, uh, they would, so, un, they would open the door. That doesn't mean she, that she doesn't need his voters. She uh, I, want to hold the, I want to talk about what you wrote about this morning, if I may. Elizabeth Warren has sort of been, it's Godot-like. Everybody's waiting, and who knows? Here's what she has tweeted in, of recent times. I'm going to fight my heart out to make sure re Donald Trump's toxic stew of hatred and insecurity never reaches the White House. There's more enthusiasm for Donald Trump among the leaders of the KKK than the leaders of the political party now controls. Here's what else is real. Donald Trump has built his campaign on racism, sexism, and xenophobia. Her former opponent, uh, uh, Scott Brown, said she was drunk tweeting. Of course, he knows a lot about drunk tweeting. But whether she was drunk tweeting or not, where is she in this race? You wrote that you don't think it's good enough for her to just stand on the stage in Philadelphia and endorse uh, Hillary Clinton, that she needs her now. Make your case. Well, first I'd like to say that's actually Scott Brown was pretty funny with that drunk tweeting. It was a good one. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was. I'm not sure where Elizabeth Warren is right now. I mean, what's the tweeting all about? Is it about, we know that she's against Trump. She's making that clear. She won't say who she's for. It's almost like she's making the case for Elizabeth Warren. Um, I'd respect her if she endorsed either Sanders or Hillary Clinton. I'm just not sure what she's waiting for. Don't you need her now? I mean, I mean, the conventional wisdom is her politics are closer to his guys than your candidates. Your candidate is the nominee of this party, despite what Nadim says. I mean, that's the reality. Wouldn't it be of great value, particularly after losing Indiana? She admits she's probably going to lose West Virginia and a couple of states leading up to California. Isn't now the time for her to bring the Sanders voters over even before Sanders is ready to come? I would say that it's a nice to have, not a need to have. And I think the, her, her 
failure to not endorse anyone sort of sets her apart even from uh, the vast majority of other senators. Last question for you. The reality is she is closer politically to Sanders. I don't mean personally politically, but on issues. How are young vote supporters of Sanders going to feel on the day that does come at some point, whether it's when Joan wants it or when she chooses it, when she does endorse Clinton? If Sanders is still in it, how are they going to react to that quickly if you, you know, can? With great respect to my colleagues here, what, what people like me, I think, want, they want to see authenticity from Clinton and Clinton surrogates and supporters. When they see talking points like, like this and they see, like, we win because and I can get away with it and it's plausible but not true, that's not what we any balk of us saying. at the party. That's we not balk what at the party and that's You literally have 10 seconds to respond because we got to no, go. No, then that's an unfair charge on the authenticity. What we are talking about when we talk about, we're talking about history, which we know because we were there in 2000. 2008, and we were there before 2008, and we're talking about knowing a candidate intimately over those years versus a candidate who, quite frankly, has suffered, as Joan said, no scrutiny of who he is, where he came from, or what he has been doing for the over 25 as years. As they say in the debates, that's an authentic. I'm sorry, we that's an authentic. Our voters think, yeah. Andrew Cabral, it's nice to see it's you. It's very nice to see you well, as well. Thank you very much. Counselor, Thanks. pleasure, Joan Vinaki. Nice, feisty discussion. See you. Thank you so much. <laughs>